All right, so that, that first setup of Admiral Nelson, um, you saw how I could just steal colors and paint them in quickly and kind of get, it's a nice little cartoony kind of painting. And it took 15 minutes and it's, it's a fine way to go. Let's, uh, for a moment, start a different approach, right? What if I need it to be more technical, right? I need it to actually really look like him. What different methods could I use? Well, one is that I could take my reference, select it all, copy it, and then paste it onto my board, right? Then I could take its opacity down, just like onion skinning in Illustrator, and I can grow it using Command T, make it as large as I want, still leaving some excess room. And now on a new layer on top of that, let me lock the reference. I can trace what I call basic shapes. And just because I'm an old school illustrator, I tend to do this in a blue, like a non-photo blue imitation. And I'll call this my analytic sketch because this is where I'm really kind of analyzing the reference, understanding where their facial proportions go. And this is where that download from the links page can come in handy. So I'm going to pull that up. Here it is. So what does this remind me? Well, it reminds me that the head, whether it's tilted or not, and I'm going to shrink my brush a little bit. I'll still keep it at 70%. But the head is basically an egg shape. Right. Here, I'll put it on white so you can see it clearly. The head is basically an egg shape, and in the middle of that egg is where the eyes go, right? But his eyes are curving around slightly because we're at a, at a 45 degree angle. And that egg, remember, I can always use my transform tools, my compositing knowledge. That egg is a little bit bigger because it goes around his chin, right? And so that eye line is a little bit different than what I had. but I'm just trying to get to know my subject a little bit with a quick sketch before I go into the painting. This is not line art. This is still digital painting, not digital coloring. And then the other line just goes right down through the center of his nose, curves down like that. Then there are five eye widths across the head from the front, but the most important rule is that there's one eye width in between the eyes. So I have to find the edges of his eyes and I see that there's basically one eye width in between. This eye is a little bit bigger than that eye because it's closer to me. Then I know that the nose is halfway from the eye line down to the chin, so halfway is right there. That's where the nose connects with the head. And then I know that the, the lips are one third down. If you split this bottom from the bottom of the nose down to the chin into thirds, you get the lips and then you get what I call the chin line, which is just where the chin tacks back to the skull. Then if I split the top half into thirds, I get the default hairline, which is where his hair starts coming out of his head right here. And this is a nice little brow ridge. It's the top of his eyebrows. And I might even put in his eyebrows. I'm not tracing. I'm just sketching, right? And then I know his nose is always going to fit between the eye line, right? Right in there. Now, because he's twisted a little bit, the ball of his nose is a little bit forward and pushing on that line. And then the ears, I don't see his ears, but I know that they are here. They fit between the eye line and the nose line if I extend those to the side. And then the hairline is roughly two-thirds. Okay, so good. So that's a nice analytical sketch of him. It's not the same as rotoscoping and just painting over the photo. Instead, this shows me how his, if his head was shaved, basically, just a little bit of hair on this hairline, how he would look. This is Nelson himself, right? Look how far that is from my just freehand, you know, sketchy painting. So there's sometimes some really good reason to have an analytical basis. Now, what I like to do is then I can just take the big basic shapes, if you remember that from the beginning of class, of his collar, for instance, like the triangle under his chin, the big triangle of his shoulders, the ovals of his, uh, those epaulets, I don't know, the shoulder things, the sash, his 
lapel, the medals, all these medals, stars. I can just place all these things roughly. before I start painting. Much like that underwater Wonder, Wonder Woman example, right? And then even his hair shape, I can kind of roughly block in how much his hair floats off of his head. Kind of put that in. Now all of that will help me. get get him to actually look like himself. And there are no photographs of Admiral Nelson that I know of, you know, to base them against. So that can be my base sketch layer. I am not going to go back to this. Right, because this is very different. Doing a sketch and then basing your painting on the sketch is very different than rotoscoping. And rotoscoping is taking a layer and then just stealing the color from it and then painting it right in. And there are actually tools in Photoshop that help you do this, most notably the mixer brush, which will automatically choose the color that's in a layer underneath. So if you want to try rotoscoping, it's a lot of fun but it doesn't allow you to fully play with what you do, right? But if you need to do a digital painting really quickly, you just say sample all layers and you just start, you can pick your brush and you just start painting. I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. And it will automatically choose the color of the layer underneath. So that then when you turn off your reference layer, you have digital paint, right? Now the reason we're not doing that today, using the mixer brush and doing rotoscoping and just tracing is because we want to not be locked into all the problems of our photo reference. But if you didn't know about the mixer brush, it is a fun tool and it's very heavily used. Because even though I'm just stealing the colors directly and stealing the placement directly, I am having to use my, my own hand to choose the direction of each brush stroke. You know, kind of like Van Gogh doing Starry Night, right? <laughs> but the problem is, in the end, it just looks like kind of a filter put over the top of the photograph. Does that make sense? All right, so this is what I like to do. Instead of just using those lines that match the photo reference directly, I'm gonna get rid of my little rotoscope lines. I like to do this. I, make, I like to make a duplicate of it, and then I like to use my compositing skills and warp and start playing with it a little bit. This is how you can make a caricature. Even though you're referencing his proportions directly, how can I have fun with it and kind of stretch him out? Notice that all the proportions of the face will stretch out just fine. That's why none of these look like believable faces, but they all look like human faces, right? They're caricatures. I could do the same thing by kind of pushing and pulling it until it's what I, what I like. And you can't do that if you're just painting over a photo or another painting. So I like that better than this. It's just subtle differences. It makes him look a little bit rounder cheat. Or if I want to stretch his neck, he has kind of a long neck. I can do that. Right. A slightly longer head. And all of that's going to make a big difference in the end. Now what do I do? Well, I go on top of that and I do my base flat color. And it's not even flat color, so I'm just gonna say base color. And it's not even local color, because like I've shown you before, I'm just using the regular brush that I customized at around 70% opacity, I'm just gonna start painting it in. 
finding skin tones, but now they're a little bit more targeted. I want to establish a darkest dark pretty early so I can put in those eyes. And I'm not using the, I'm not painting over the, the photo reference. I am using my sketch as reference, my analytical sketch. This allows me as the artist to make more decisions. Now, being a portrait artist is tricky. Doing commissions and portraits is tricky. Because people won't be so happy that you're a creative artist when they don't like, like the way you look, you know, when they don't like the way that, that they look in your, in your eyes. So sometimes, especially with commissions, you have to be pretty careful about matching proportions. And though that's not the most fun part of art, it is something that's kind of expected from people that commission portraits. But I have no such expectation of this, so you can make your people look as silly as you like. I find it helpful to treat everyone I'm doing a painting of as though they just divorced me. And so I'm looking to get payback. No, I don't know what that means. You don't need to be, uh, for this class anyway, in your own artistic process, you don't need to be too overly respectful of your subject matter. You can have fun with it. Okay, so notice as I paint, it's looking fine, but with all the white around it, it's a little hard to judge. So I'm going to go back and turn on my gray. Right? And you'll notice that it's also taking me a little bit longer. Now that I have the analytic thing, it's forcing me to tighten up a little bit each of my strokes. But I'm still, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's going to make each stroke more accurate. But I'm still not zooming in. I'm, I'm not going too detailed too early. That is important. The other thing about having the gray background is it reminds you that if there is something light, you need to paint it in. You're not just using the default white of the background. Now, you'll notice I'm wasting a lot of time going over here and finding colors. So sometimes digital painters will put their colors off to the side like this. And I'm using basically all the, the realistic colors from the reference. I haven't gotten into these kind of crazier colors yet, but there's no reason I couldn't just jump right into them and bring some of those over. So you can create your own little internal palette if you like as well. I don't know which one's faster, but I like to have multiple sources to pull from. And I'm not trying to get the drawing perfect. I'm trying to get the shapes representative. But I am keeping in mind like the space between the eyes. And I am changing color quite a bit, which I recommend you do. Really have fun, play with the color. You'll also notice I'm not picking the color from the color selector at all. You can do that, but this can be a really hard way to see what the color is. So I prefer to kind of steal and modify colors. And on my future layers, these colors, of course, are going to get layered and layered with other colors. And right now they're only at 70%. So I'm also not using my eraser at all. All of his medals and honors. This gold paint is actually quite dark 
you know, it's just kind of a dark brown in terms of its color. So having these really saturated yellow.